Parvati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 8, containing the Supreme, text number 12. Sarva Dwarani Samyamya Sarva Dwarani Samyamya Manoridi Nirujyacha Manoridi Nirujyacha Muryani Atmana Pranam Muryani Atmana Pranam Asthito Yoga Dharanam Asthito Yoga Dharanam Samyamya 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 Tami Lord Yanya Dhamana Prana Asito Yogatarana Sarva Dwarani All the doors of the body All the doors of the body Samyamya Controlling Mana The mind Vridhi In the heart Nirudya, Nirudya, confining, confining, cha, cha also, also, mordya, mordni, mordni, on the head, on the head, adaya, adaya fixing, fixing, adraha, adraha, of the soul, of the soul, prana, prana, the light there, asitaha, asitaha. Situated in, in. Yoga Dharanam, the Yoga Situation. Translation of Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. The Yoga Situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all the doors of the senses, fixing the mind on the heart, and the light there at the top of the head. One establishes oneself in yoga. Purport. To practice yoga is suggested here. One, was, one first has to close the doors of all sense enjoyment. This practice is called pratyahara, or withdrawing the senses from the sense objects. The sense organs for acquiring knowledge, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and touch, should be fully controlled and should not be allowed to engage in self-gratification. In this way, the mind focuses on the super soul in the heart, and the life force is raised up to the top of the head. In the sixth chapter, this process is described in detail. But as mentioned before, this practice is not practical in this age. The best process is Krishna consciousness. If one is always able to fix his his mind on Krishna Krishna and devotional service, it is very easy for him to remain in undisturbed, Transcendental tran- transfer of insomnia. So, Rudrani Samyamya, Manori di Nirojicha, Moradhyani Atmana Pranam, Asito Yoga Dharanam. The yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind and the heart, and the life air at the top of the head. One establishes himself in yoga. <clears throat> well, you might wonder why Krishna keeps on talking about Astanga Yoga in the Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> he talked about it in the sixth chapter, he talked about it in the eighth chapter, he talks about it in the summary, 
in touch because the basic principle of all the yogis is the same. The question is how you achieve, namely paying attention to Krishna. That's the whole idea. So as soon as you get a material body, then there are so many demands, and the demands are principally the gates of the body, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Namely, Vakya Vegam, Manasakrota Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udrapasa Vegam, Etan Vegam, Yoga Shaheta Dira, Sarvam Apimam Pratibhim Satsvisha. The urge to speak, the mind's demands, it pauses the tongue, belly, and genital. Vakya Vegam, Manasakrota Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udrapasa Vegam, Etan Vegam, Yoga Shaheta Dira. So these Forces, these pushings are always there and they manifest themselves in the gates of the body or in these there are certain chakras and there are sensitive points and they govern the different organs in the body, etc. etc. So, unless they're under control, then it's impossible to think of one thing, one thing. We're always going to be drawn. So, we find, for instance, uh, Dhruva Maharaj, in order to reach perfection by the meditation process, he had to give up eating, Raja. Something we're not exactly prepared to do ourselves for the most part. He gave up eating, then he gave up drinking, then he gave up breathing. <laughs> well, obviously, to give up eating is difficult. That if our program was every third day, you ate a little bit of fruit. <laughs> we wouldn't get many people attracted to our process. And then we explained our system. You know, you started out eating a little fruit, and every sixth day you dry leaves that fall from the tree. <laughs> and then after that, you, you take uh, drink a little water every ninth day. And then after that, you, you breathe every twelfth day. And then finally, our aim is to stop breathing. <laughs> and then stand on one leg and close all the doors of your senses, all the gates of your body. The nose, stop breathing. The ears, stop hearing. And then you can reach perfection. We'd like to try. <laughs> People wouldn't take us very seriously. But that is the yoga process. Stop paying attention to the things outside and then pay attention to Krishna within the heart. Impossible in this age, no one's going to do it. No one can even show anyone to do it because no one knows how to do it. It's possible, but it's only possible if you have the right body. Guru Maharaj was born in Satya Yoga. He had a body that could stand such an activity. We die. We die. <laughs> We die away before we reach perfection. <laughs> we want to die after the first month. <laughs> <laughs> and just thinking about what's going to be the next six months would be enough, you know. So it's recommended always to chant Hare Krishna, and that's hard enough. And that's why we have Japa time. We're supposed to sit in the temple, we have the pictures. Is that supposed to be dry? You know, we're not, hopefully we don't chant our job in the, in the kitchen <coughs> when they're preparing club domains and samosas and, and expect to pay attention. <laughs> and generally, it's time, like sometimes the devotees even drive, drive cars and they're chanting. So if they're actually paying attention to the chanting, they're a danger to everyone in the car. <laughs> And if they don't pay, to pay attention, then they're chanting offensively and they're, they're a danger to themselves. Therefore, we try to arrange a situation where we can actually concentrate. Because that's the whole thing, is to concentrate the mind upon Krishna at some time. For one who can actually concentrate and remember Krishna, then it's possible to go into the next plot process of feeling his presence. If we don't, believe if we don't concentrate on the mind of Krishna, that we won't feel his presence. If we don't feel his presence, we won't experience what Krishna consciousness is. Because Krishna consciousness is not an ideal, it's an experience. Ideal, or idea, it's an experience. 
So the yogis, they find it very difficult because in the beginning, they're trying to concentrate, but their minds are going in all different directions like ours, but they're not going to get anything positive for a long time. So generally, people, only people who are really fried with the material world and had so many bad experiences, then they may attempt the yoga process. Or, as we find in the nectar of devotion, a Brahmin, part of his ordinary meditation, in previous in previous ages, people just yet regularly were in India, at least, or in the cultured world, they would engage in, in service to the deities, especially the Brahmins. And so he was able to sit there and do pranayama and meditate upon Krishna in his pastimes by doing deity worship, bringing water from the sacred places, and the Saraswati, the Jamuna, the Kaveri, and gold and silver pots, and then bring them to the deities and bathe the deities and and dress the deities and offer them food all within his mind for many, many years. And then one day he put his finger into the sweet rice pot, test and see if it was hot, cool enough, and his finger got burned, and Krishna and Vaikuntha was laughing. <laughs> and the Yakalakshmi were wondering, what are you laughing about? Then he brought that Brahman back to Vaikuntha. So that process of meditation is possible, but meditation on Krishna. And this, in any age, meditation on Krishna's name, form, quality, and pastimes is always superior to this kind of meditation mentioned here, because this problem will say that by following the indirect path, there's always the danger of turning into a personalism. Going from the, the indirect path, going from a, a shudra, which means one who's in the mode of ignorance and lamenting most of the time, but by taking up some religious process, coming to the, to the platform of becoming a Vaisha, which in our terminology means that you're just, you have some intelligence, but comfort is you try to achieve your work and go that. So that in our terminology means that, you know, people are into the nature. Maybe there's a few people into farming and cow protection in our society. So that's vicious. They know good food, nice milk products, clean air, fresh water, that this is an advancement of the hectic life of the materialist in Kali Yuga, which leads to lamentation. And then as they advance, they become managers. They want to organize society, they want to organize their life, they want to put things together so that they get the maximum amount of comfort and the minimum amount of stress, and they're interested in saving others in that way. And they get directions from the Brahmins how to do it, how to organize their lives in the, Bra- in the society. And then there's the Brahmins who can actually meditate. And they, if you're not, if you go through the process and you don't know that the goal is Krishna, to meditate upon Krishna, they start meditating, but they meditate on Brahman, like the Kamaras. And only by good association do they find out that they should be thinking about Krishna rather than Brahman. They actually find out that there's a real Krishna and he's God and he's the source of all pleasure and everything. And then they can meditate like that. So that's what the yogis, the problem with the yoga system is that it's not possible in this age to begin with. The second is too, com- is too difficult to achieve in a short period of time. And people generally get misled because they don't know what the goal is. If they know what the goal is, they start with the goal, mainly thinking about Krishna, rather than go through this difficult, complicated process that usually doesn't work very well, especially in the age like Kali Yuga. So, chanting and listening, hearing attention about Krishna is difficult enough, but at least it's possible if one understands it clearly what to do. And it's possible that especially one can get a taste chanting attentively and getting a taste of hearing hearing Shrimad Bhagavatam for worship. If somehow or another one can get some liking for the activities of devotional service, then that liking can be developed. That one can start paying some attention to Krishna and Krishna's service, and then it's possible to develop a taste which will keep one in devotional service and inspire one to go further. But 
the Sistani yoga process is, is not exactly, doesn't give very much taste, unless you have a taste for stretching your body, for the modern yogis, or the, which is, you know, people get a taste for that. They get a thinner body, it's more flexible, they, they, they don't have so many physical problems until they practice long enough and they start breaking the bones and their joints and it doesn't work in old age very well, it doesn't. But anyhow, they get some taste from it. And, uh, but as far as the actual yoga process, it's very, very difficult. The lack of suffering is one of advances because generally to practice the Astanga Yoga process, one has generally has said that had gone through the, to the Brahminical stage in a real yoga practice. In other words, they must have reached the stage where they're not in distress anymore. They're not interested in material comfort. They have, they've got knowledge of the Brahmins. They've understood that they are Brahman. And so, generally speaking, they go, can go through a lot of austerity and really make an effort to do it. But oftentimes they fail for different reasons because it's a really difficult process. And it doesn't give immediately so much taste. It gives, well, first of all, it may give one intermittent sense of obstar if he gets worried. <laughs> and then you get distracted by that. Or they get some mystic power a little bit more, they become more powerful. You get puffed up and they want to, you know, show up their friends their mystic power they got, impress their friends and relatives. <clears throat> or they just get tired of the whole thing. It's just, they get what they want and they just go home. So I'll stop there. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Now we're more fortunate in Durvasamuni because at least we, from the very beginning, because we, we as Prabhupada said, because we know nothing, we knew nothing. <laughs> Therefore, we could accept that Krishna is God. We grew up in India. Ganesh is God, Durga is God, Indra is God. We would have been all confused. So we knew nothing, and when we hear that Krishna is God, all right, he could be God. <laughs> He's false. We didn't object to it. No, 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 you don't understand, you know. My ancestors worked to worship Shiva for so many, so many, de you know, lifetimes, generations. You know, yes, I'll put Krishna on my altar, but don't take Shiva and, and Durga away. My ancestors were cursed me. So we didn't have that problem. But our problem is, is probably that we generally like to fight and we're attracted to sex life. He said that's our problem. Generally, we don't along with each other. If you're attracted to the sex life, then you like, then you'll wind up fighting with people. So that's our, and therefore we can't pay attention because we're, you know, we're too. One is passion, one the other one is ignorance. And therefore it's hard for us to pay attention, that's our only problem. Because we don't know anything, therefore there's no obstacle. <laughs> yeah, we had too much knowledge, we think, you know, yeah. You go to someone from India who thinks they know everything, and they go, yes, yes, I know, yes. <laughs> yes, I know more than you. I, I, was, I was born as a devotee. So, on the other hand, if we actually become intelligent enough to realize that we should focus as much as possible on the activities of the nine processes, then we'll get, we'll get, make some advancement, much more than the yogis will. Although the yogis have started out probably much more advanced than we are. Even people in India are much more culture and everything else. But as long as we have faith that Krishna is God, we try to focus our mind on Him. And serve them, and we'll make a lot of make much more advancement. Okay. Yes. And even more important than that, believe it or not, the most important thing is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. 
I mean, I was I've observed that even the devotees were, you know, more or less rascals. But when they're engaged in the mission, they did so many crazy things, but Caitanya Mahaprabhu kept them engaged because they're engaged in the mission. There's some special, I mean, not that we're recommending that you do crazy things. <laughs> but the mission to Caitanya Mahaprabhu is so important that he'll forgive anything, it's practically speaking. You just keep on engaging his mission. Give Krishna confidence to others. As long as he sees that you're trying to be an instrument like that, then he he, take, he helps, keeps him, keeps one engaged in that mission. Do you have a question? Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, if I understood correctly, we have to focus on these nine processes, mm-hmm. and at the same time we try to associate with sattva guna as much as possible to cultivate this. Mm-hmm. Transparency that we can sort of absorb ourselves in these nine processes, if that is correct. Understood? Yeah, there's nine processes. There's also five health processes which constitute our daily activities. Our, our sadhana, you know, chanting the holy name, hearing Shrimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, worshiping the deities, uh, serving the devotees and, and making the atmosphere spiritual, living in a spiritual life. These are our main sadhana, of which the nine processes are, you know, those are the, the main, nine main processes and these fit into those nine main processes. Actually, there's 64, which Sri Rupa Goswami repeats twice the five powerful processes. But hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the deities, ser- serving the Lord, Offering prayers, you know, these are also, you can also see these as a part of five powerful processes. And Sattva Guna, yes, we have to pay attention. Sattva Guna means pay attention, that's all. Be clean, be truthful, be brahminical. The, 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 then from there we can much more easily concentrate the mind on Krishna. And these five powerful processes, and the nine processes too. And especially these five powerful processes, even a little sincere concentration on Krishna with some devotion, one can bring, one, can, one can experience bhava or ecstasy. And it's the ecstasy that actually gives us clarity, brings us. Beyond, they actually get some ecstasy, some idea shakti. That's what actually brings us into clarity, more clarity than we had before. I mean, our, our goal is the sadhya. Sad, the goal is ecstasy, Bob. Put in the iron, and the fire gets hotter and hotter. But we, not that we should start imitating ex, oh, I'm ecstatic. I'm, but it's actually, it's, it's given by mercy from Krishna when we concentrate our minds on him with some devotion. Then he can, he can reveal to us, he'll give us the intelligence to uh, experience Krishna consciousness. It's just one, hopefully it's one realization after another. That's Krishna consciousness. It's not one Sunday feast after another. <laughs> it's one realization after it gives us an understanding how to practice Krishna consciousness so that ultimately we actually become aware of Krishna all the time, everywhere and then our natural feelings will awaken because we're naturally Krishna conscious so that we have to try to feel but when Krishna reveals these things to us when we're willing to act as his instrument then the, natural, the feelings will come out naturally because that's who we actually are. That's our actual identity. It's not that we're going to learn to feel for Krishna. That's how we naturally are. We're just artificially feeling something else now. Is that right? Anything else? Thank you very much. Kandaraj Bhagavad Gita Kijai. Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Or Pamananda.